this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Edition CS6 to create powerful voiceovers for your videos. First, I'm going to use audio captured from the Zoom H1 recorder. Next, I'll show you how to import your Zoom audio and apply some powerful voiceover effects. Finally, I'll save the audio and show you how to import it into Adobe After Effects so it can be synced with a video project. Okay, let's take a look at the Zoom H1 Handy Recorder. It's pretty small, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to set the gain to about 45. This microphone is extremely sensitive, so setting the gain too high is going to increase the background noise too much. So keep the setting somewhat low, and of course the setting you use should depend on the kind of audio that you're recording. When your recording is complete, turn off the recording and plug it into the computer using USB. Let's get started. Let's take a look at our audio file. Okay, drag your audio file into Adobe Edition. In this case, it's an H1 Zoom file. And first of all, let's take a look at the audio waveform. The audio waveform looks a little bit small. Let's zoom in a little bit. For this tutorial, I'm going to use a very small bit of audio as an example. The first effect is adaptive noise reduction. Okay, this is going to give us a first pass uh, noise reduction. We're going to do some additional uh, noise reduction for this tutorial. It's going to result in a very crisp audio sample at the end. Looking at the preset, I select light noise reduction and I reduce the spectral decay rate, FFT size 512. And of course we want to check high quality mode. The next effect is going to be amplify. Now here you have a choice between using amplify and speech volume leveler. But for this example, I'm going to use Amplify. Looking at the waveform, I know about how much I'm going to need to amplify to get the effect that I need. And plus 3 dB boost. Next, we're going to select Multiband Compressor. I'm going to use the Broadcast preset to start. You can see that already the audio is sounding a lot better. I'll show you how I made a custom YouTube intro for my PvP and PvE videos. We can do even better. Let's go to Amplitude and Compression. Select Dynamics Processing. I'm going to start with a Compander preset. Select Compander. Select Spline Curves. Try dragging different parts of the S-curve around to get the sound that you're looking for. The next effect is a very important one. It's going to be the Parametric Equalizer. If you want that radio voice sound or you want to add a lot of bass in the background or um, whatever, Parametric Equalizer works great. Alright, so I deselect a couple of these. Looking at number 4, I want to bring up the, you know, 4500, 5000 kilohertz range. You might want to emphasize a slightly different frequency. Uh, give this a try. Just a little boost right here. Next, I want to look at the low range because I want to bring the bass out a little bit. I want to produce a very full sound. In the low range, I bring this up a little bit. Here at about 65 hertz, uh, bring that up. Change the Q width to 1. It's going to make a smoother curve. And play it back to see where you are. Next tutorial, I'll show you how I made a custom YouTube intro. And this is optional if you want to uh, take advantage of this high pass and low pass. It kind of rounds off the edges. Let's take a look at what we've done so far. We just did the parametric equalizer. We did dynamics processing. The next effect, mastering. Mastering's a very cool effect. Select Subtle Clarity to start off with. And Subtle Clarity is going to give you a lot of options here. Uh, we've already just adjusted the amplitude and compressed the audio quite a bit, so let's minimize the loudness maximizer. You can drag that down. We can increase the reverb. This is going to dramatically change the way your audio comes across in your videos. In this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how I made a custom YouTube intro for my PvP and PvE videos. Next thing you're going to do is click Apply. This is going to apply the effect to your audio. Alright, let's do a little review of what we've done so far. We did an adaptive noise reduction. We amplified the audio. We applied a multiband compressor using the broadcast preset. Uh, we, used, uh, we created an S-curve in Dynamics Processing. We applied the parametric equalizer to bring out some important parts of the audio. And finally, as a finishing touch, we added the, uh, a little bit of reverb. Next, let's take a look at this. This slider right here, dry and wet, is kind of like, I think of it like transparency in Photoshop. You're going to reduce the effect a little bit by sliding it towards the dry. So this is going to apply 90% of this total rack effect make the effect more subtle. Okay, next we have to apply this effect 
to the audio file. But first, let's save our work into a preset. Click this save effect preset, give the preset a name, and you can come back to this preset later and apply all of these effects to your audio in the future. Okay, we're done with that. We saved it. Select the region of the audio you want to apply this effect to and click the apply button. You can see looking at the waveform that the effect has been applied and this has made a dramatic improvement of the recorded audio. But we can make it sound even better. This next part, I'm going to explain to you in detail how to reduce noise. And when you apply this amplification and compression to your audio, you find that you're also amplifying all of the noise that's around you. You can probably make use of additional noise reduction. So let's see how that works. In the effects menu, pull down the effects menu, go to noise reduction, restoration, select noise reduction process. Let's take a look at some of the settings in this window. Let's go down to the noise print snapshot. This determines how many snapshots of noise to include in the captured profile. The default 4000 is optimal for producing accurate data, but in this example, I'm going to increase the noise print snapshot to the maximum, 8192. The FFT size determines how many individual frequency bands are analyzed. This option causes the most dramatic changes in quality. So the more bands you have, the finer frequency detail you get. The default FFT size is 4096 to 12,000. But in this example, I'm going to use the maximum. So to continue, I need to capture a noise print. I'm going to select a region of the audio that contains noise. Okay. And then I clicked capture noise print. That's going to assay the noise in the selected audio. Now I want to reduce the noise by about 80%. Typically I keep this between 60 and 80%. I want to reduce by 40 dB. This determines the level of noise reduction, the spectral decay rate, which by default is 65%. It allows for greater noise reduction with fewer artifacts and basically between 40% and 75% work best. I select 12 as the precision factor. And this affects distortions and amplitude, a values of 5 and up work best. For smoothing, I choose 32 here. And by increasing the smoothing amount, you can reduce background artifacts, but you may increase overall background noise level. The transition width determines the range between what is noise and what remains and typically very small changes in transition width can have a profound effect on your noise reduction. Select the region of the audio that you want to reduce the noise in and click apply. There's one final thing I like to do to the audio. I like to apply hard limiter. So using the medium preset in hard limiter to give the audio a final boost and normalize the amplitude. Preview the audio, see how it sounds and let's go ahead and save. In this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how I made a custom YouTube intro for my PvP and PvE videos. Go to the File menu, select Save As, and we're going to save this as Wave PCM. This is the best format to save in if you're going to bring this audio into Premiere, After Effects, or whatever favorite video editing software you use. Here we're working in 48,000 Hz stereo at 24-bit. The Wave settings is 24-bit integer. RF64 format, which is default for Adobe Edition CS6. Click OK. So basically this file is ready to be imported into your favorite video editing software. Here I'll give you a summary of how to import your audio into your favorite video editing software. And in this example, I'm importing the audio that I made in Adobe Edition into Adobe After Effects. And I'll sync that audio with my video footage. So here in Adobe After Effects, I go to the file menu. I select import file and I select the audio file that I just saved. I'm going to import a video file, which is actually an image sequence that I generated for one of my recent tutorials. Drag this into a new composition, drag the audio into the composition, and now I can start syncing my audio with the video. Type L on your keyboard twice, and that'll bring up the waveform. And I want to drag this portion of the audio to the left a little bit. I want the audio to start sooner. In order to do that, I need to split this layer so that I can drag it to the left. So to split the layer, go to the edit menu, select split layer, and the keyboard shortcut is control shift D and press L on your keyboard twice to bring up the waveform. And now you can just drag this audio to the left so that it starts sooner. All right, that's all for this tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you like this tutorial and you like the channel, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Good luck and have fun.